Suppose I have an equation, x squared plus y squared is equal to 16, and I told you to take the derivative of this without isolating y. We could very easily write this as y is equal to 16 minus x squared and take the square root of that, but what if I asked you just to differentiate it as it was? Well, this is called implicit differentiation, and I'm going to show you with an example how we do this. Okay, so we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to x. So x squared plus y squared equals the derivative with respect to x of 16. Okay, well, the right side is equal to 0, and we're going to split this up into two parts. The derivative with respect to x of x squared plus the derivative with respect to x of y squared. So we have a little problem here because what the heck do we do with this? The derivative with respect to x of y squared. Well, we're going to take a look at the chain rule here and we're going to take a look at this specifically. Well, the derivative of y squared with respect to x, this is kind of like, let's say, let's take the derivative respect to y of y squared, and then let's multiply it by the derivative of y with respect to x. So what we're doing here is we're using the chain rule to figure out what the derivative of y squared is with respect to x. So if we do this, what we have is this is equal to 2y times dy dx. And we can either leave this as dy dx or I might also write it as 2y times y prime. And I like that a little bit more, but for the first example, we'll use dy dx. All right, so with this information, the derivative with respect to x of x squared is 2x, plus we know the derivative with respect to x of y squared is 2y dy dx. This is all equal to zero. And now what we can do is we can start moving things to the other side. So 2y dy dx is equal to minus 2x, and we divide both sides by 2y, and then we get negative 2x over 2y. So we get that the, the derivative of x squared plus y squared equals 16 is negative x over y. And this is the derivative of a circle with radius 4. So here is your equation for the derivative. And you can also write this as y prime is equal to negative x over y. But this is implicit differentiation. So I'm going to show you another example here. One a little bit more complicated. So what do we have here? We have x squared plus xy minus y squared is equal to 4. Okay. So we have the derivative of the left, which is x squared, so that's 2x, plus x times y. This is a composite function, so we take the derivative of x, which is 1 times y, plus x times the derivative of y, which is going to be 1 multiplied by the derivative of y with respect to the derivative of x. All right, and now we're going to subtract the derivative of y squared, which we saw is 2y times the derivative of y with respect to x, and this is all going to equal the derivative of 4, which is 0. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to rewrite dy dx as y prime because it's a little bit easier to keep track of things and factor things if we use y prime. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put everything that doesn't have a y prime in it onto the right side. So we're going to have xy prime minus 2yy prime is equal to minus 2x minus y. We're now going to factor out a y prime. So y prime times x minus 2y is equal to negative 2x minus y. And then we will isolate the y prime. So we have minus 2x minus y over x minus 2y. 
We could factor out a negative, put it on the bottom, do whatever we want with it, but right here is the answer. So this really isn't all that difficult. It's just understanding that when you have a derivative with respect to x of some variable y, let's say y to the n, this is the same thing as the derivative with respect to y of y to the n times the derivative of y with respect to x. So it's just breaking the chain rule up, seeing it in a different form called implicit differentiation. And it kind of, well, it works exactly the same. You, if, if a function is easy enough, you can isolate y and then take the derivative of everything with respect to x. But in some cases like this, it's not easy because in our equation here, x squared plus xy minus y squared equals four. You can't factor out a y nicely and isolate them. You have to differentiate implicitly. You have no choice. So I'm going to leave you guys with one practice question. This is a nice implicit differentiation question that involves trig. So here we go. Four times the cosine. You know what? Let's remove the four. Don't need it. Cosine of x times sine of y is equal to one. I want you to find the derivative and isolate y. So the derivative of y. So y prime. Isolate that. All right. Let's take a look at this. Well, we have to take the derivative of both sides, so we're going to have to use some product rule here. So we take the derivative of cosine x, which is negative sine x times sine y, plus cosine of x times the derivative of sine y, which will be cosine of y times y prime. That's our dy dx, and this is going to be equal to the derivative of 1, which is 0. Okay. Let's bring our everything without a y prime to the right side. So this is sine x sine y is equal to cosine of x cosine of y times y prime. And we can divide both sides by cosine x cosine y. So we'll get sine x sine y over cosine x cosine y. And we can use our trig identities to rewrite this as tan x times tan y. So seemingly difficult, really not all that difficult. This is implicit differentiation. And there are some harder examples that we'll get to eventually, but for now, this is sufficient. A lot of the examples will be polynomial examples or trig examples. Very rarely will you have exponential examples. And when we do get to that point, we will be introducing new techniques to deal with that but that will come at a later time.